um, this is a project about improving computational epidemiology with higher fidelity models of human behavior. Um, <clears throat> this is a project that I'm doing with my co-PIs, Christian Lebeer and Mark Orr. Uh, Christian's at CMU and Mark is at the University of Virginia. And we have uh, a larger cast of contributor contributors that are working on all varieties of things ranging from natural language processing to uh, epidemiology. Um, <clears throat> This project was motivated by the realization that last year we were in the midst of historically the most massive attempt ever to change uh, human behavior. And I'm talking about specifically non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, such as social distancing, hand washing, mask wearing, and now uh, vaccination. And uh, um, decision makers and, and people who are trying to uh, 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 manage public health um, rely on epidemiological models to forecast rates of infections and deaths and to try to understand what the possible effects are of these MPIs, these non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions. Unfortunately, a lot of these models uh, are not very detailed and have a huge abundance of uncertainty. Um, and to some degree, we believe that that's partly because they do not really have accurate models of how people respond psychologically and behaviorally to NPIs and to what uh, is going on in the environment around them. Uh, and just to give you a concrete example, this is one of the many models that we've seen on the news uh, or on the web uh, over the past year. Um, it's a snapshot that I took in October. And uh, on the right-hand side of that graph is a projection for the, fall the month following October when this was presented. And what you can see is this huge pink error bar around the prediction. And that uh, the difference between the top and the bottom of that confidence interval is, a, is an order of magnitude. And within that pink area, you could reasonably say things might go up, they might stay the same, or they might go down. So these models have a large degree of uh, uncertainty, and we are making the bet that um, by understanding and uh, modeling more, more specifically individual psychology, um, that we will be able to do better. And this is partly because I think we all believe that people's beliefs and attitudes and intentions and self-efficacy all have an impact on how they respond. And there's certainly um, evidence out there that that is the case. Um, and it is also the case that these responses seem to change over time. So we've heard a lot about COVID fatigue and how people's attitudes change uh, over time. And these things also seem to vary across regions. So some regions seem to respond differently than others. So uh, our uh, aim was to, to build computational predictive models uh, that are based on a variety of things that we had already been working on. Uh, so uh, one set of things was around uh, theories of individual health psychology that some of us had worked on. Another is um, a, a large uh, amount of experience with a particular theory and computational modeling system called ACTAR, which allows us to build computational models of behavior change and to develop uh, agent-based uh, simulations. And so out of this, um, our goal was to develop what we call psychologically valid agents that uh, we could build into agent-based models that would allow us to accurately predict the dynamics of, of changing behavior over time and how those dynamics are impacted by these MPIs, by government messaging, mass media, social media, disinformation campaigns, et cetera. The theory itself that's the core of our work, uh, ACTAR, is, is a constrained, very principled framework for modeling human behavior. It's a theory of the structure of the brain and the functioning of the mind. It's also a, a simulation environment. And it essentially says how the modules of the brain that uh, carry out uh, goals and memory and perception, how they operate together dynamically over time to produce uh, behavior. It allows us to model uh, both the symbolic knowledge that people have, as well as their statistical adaptivity to the things that are going on around them. And it includes about 45 years of research uh, based in the laboratory, as well as real world applications, a lot of fMRI and EEG imaging uh, data. Um, and so one way to think of this is we're trying to build these individual level agents that can simulate the, what we call the response 
profiles of people uh, that is, you know, whether they will in fact wash their hands or wear masks or social distance, or are they going to go out and party or go to um, uh, uh, go out uh, to restaurants? Uh, and these agents are going to be seated with representations of individual level attitudes and beliefs and intentions. And then those agents will be embedded in an agent based simulation of, of given regions and periods. And from that, we want to be able to predict. Uh, actual behavior that we will compare against some proxy measures that we have of behavior, including uh, mobility data from Unicast and uh, mask wearing data that's collected daily from uh, COVIDcast. And um, the way that we are seeding these models is using a variety of data that are out there already, including these daily polling data sites. Uh, we're also doing a lot of analysis of uh, mass media and online information and uh, using that to, uh, to get representations that we think uh, characterize individuals in these different regions over time. So just to give you some examples, um, we're, uh, we're ingesting um, a data set called the Third Eye Chiron data set, which is basically a textualized version of uh, CNN, MSNBC, and all the other uh, major uh, uh, news networks. We've got access to a variety of uh, data sets of, of Twitter, including a geotag uh, COVID data set uh, for the world. And uh, our, our CMU partners have a system called Casos, which analyzes data from the United States uh, in, in great detail and at great volumes. And so here are some plots of pro versus uh, con tweet volumes in a variety of cities in California that we've collected. Uh, and we use uh, uh, um, GPS mobility tracking provided by Unicast, as well as uh, day by day polling data about behaviors uh, from the CMU COVID cast uh, folks at Delphi. Um, so, just to give you um, one thread of analysis that we're doing, <clears throat> uh, a bunch of folks who are doing natural language processing and machine learning over Twitter. Um, are inducing what we call stances, which are representations of attitudes, beliefs, and intentions from individual level tweets, which are then aggregated up to the users who are making those tweets. Um, and these are uh, uh, stances or attitudes, beliefs towards certain things like mask wearing or social distancing. Uh, we do that at large scale and then use the representations that come out of that natural language processing to seed the uh, representations inside of this psychological valid agent, computational agent that we're using in our sims. Um, just to give you some ideas of the kinds of behaviors or phenomena that we're trying to model, um, using our psychologically uh, uh, valid agents, we are modeling a variety of phenomena. These are just a couple. Uh, on the left here, one phenomena that one sees over and over again uh, across the world is that uh, as the pandemic hit, there was um, a, a great decrease in the uh, effective transmission rates down to around one. And then this kind of uh, dampened oscillation around, uh, around a transmission rate of one that seemed to indicate that people were adjusting their behavior to modulate that transmission rate. And our psychological models can in fact uh, model mask wearing in relation to what's going on in the ambient uh, environment in that kind of dampened oscillating pattern, which is in that uh, lower quadrant there. On the right here, we're just showing how, um, how at the aggregate level, this is for four states uh, of uh, polling data about mask wearing, we can, our models can predict uh, pretty well um, what the actual mask wearing uh, probabilities will be in those four states and we can get down to finer grain regional. Uh, areas. So uh, if you want to find out more, please uh, contact me. And I just want to mention that our research is funded by NSF and IARPA. And I want to thank uh, the various folks at the bottom here for providing us with data. Thank you.